Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. T21 Lexus LS 500. Executive package without launch control. Brake boost. She's torquey, man. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Yeah, lots of torque. Horsepower and torque. 416 horsepower, 442 pound-feet of torque from a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Yo, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't even really realize this car existed until this week. <laughs> I've been trying to book this for a long time, so I'm glad we're finally in it. Okay, so what this is, is an S-Class version for a Lexus. Yes, S-Class, 7 Series, a big body sedan. Yeah, and it's got a 500 in it, just like the LC500, so we have to assume it's top of the line. Yes, because the number used to represent the engine, like the LS430 had a 4.3 liter V8, well, not anymore. Okay, so pretend I'm a celebrity and you're trying to get me away from the paparazzi. Well, is that, for, is that for, kind of bad six? It's like no, that's that's totally fine. Okay, handle me through turns three to five at Cayuga Corner. Okay, here we go, and it's actually pretty good considering the size. It's nowhere near as good as like a BMW 7 Series or an S Class, but I mean, if I think about the comfort, <laughs> it's quite good, and it does pull you through. Now it didn't let me upshift because I'm just in drive, so I'm gonna have to put it into manual mode with this Prius-like shifter. And can we get some oversteer? Zero. 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 So this is all-wheel drive. It's a rear bias system. And it, the main focus of the system is just to keep you on the road, not let you have any fun. Yeah, as long as you're going as fast as you can and holding back when it's time to start plowing, you'll be fast. But do not try to have any fun. This is not a 760 Li at all. No, so I'm going to go into a cliche slide corner to see if I can get some oversteer again. And watch this. It does that kind of nasty like yeah. pull through thing. It's, it's like the computer's doing stuff, and uh, it just doesn't doesn't does not like. No, it's everything to prevent you from having fun. So let's take this onto the road where everyone's going to be driving this. Yeah, literally, not a single person will bring this to a track ever. Never. I never want to see this uh, at a track uh, unless they have an LC 500 with a cage waiting for them at the track. Yes, or if it's just us today taking this to the track. <laughs> Since this is an executive car, we probably should have worn suits and had one of us sit in the back, right? Yeah. Uh, Damn it. The cliche thing we keep forgetting to do. Okay, so we should talk about the most important, most impressive part is the materials and the look of this interior. Yeah, and the overall comfort, everything about no, this. No, no, no. The looks okay, of the fine. material is way more important than the comfort. I disagree. Other cars but... are as comfortable. No other car has an interior like this. That is true. Okay, starting with these door cards, we've got real glass. Yes, Kiriko glass, I believe, which is like a Japanese thing. It's so fancy, so sparkly, not cheesy at all. No, it's gorgeous. And my favorite part is we have this folded fabric kind of thing on the door panel. It's and 3D, like it's it, so cool. And when the light hits it right, it's so bright and punchy. It's such a good maroon slash burgundy. And the cool thing is the armrest here is a floating design like it's still connected but yeah and even look at these handles too like incorporated they're, around the glass they're like right like the lc500 handles yeah but we don't have the glass in the lc500 yeah but the handles are the same and then the flowing dashboard the way all the leather and everything wraps around it's great these swoops from where the vent are look amazing but you'll notice this is very similar to the lc500 the lc500 did not have a touch screen yes this thankfully does because this has been refreshed for 2021 yeah so all they did is just tack it on right to where the other one was, and it looks fine. I wasn't shocked by it or anything. Lexus do this to every car. Yes, and well, I think they are, considering to, what they've done to the IS and the LS. To every LC500. So, which means the LC500 next-gen refresh is gonna be pff, even better somehow. Okay, and there's still a lot more interior stuff I wanna talk about. My next favorite interior thing, which is the best feature I've seen in any car my whole life. Oh, I know what it is. This volume slash tuning knob. I feel like we've been in another car with it, but this is perfect. This is. This is the best version of this if we've ever experienced this before. It's unreal. Because the tuning knob is on the outside and it's all like knurled and stuff. You can adjust everything quickly. It, it moves through the channels quickly and you don't have to reach across the whole dashboard to turn a tuning knob like you do in every Kia Hyundai Genesis. Yeah, it's just the same button in one, but you don't actually ever miss the button that you need to press. It's, it's, it's perfect. perfect, holy crap. And it's so nice having the analog clock in the dash just like molded in there, because I tried to touch it and it's behind the glass. Yeah, I like that. Okay, what other interior stuff do you really like? Uh, obviously the back, we'll get to the back in a bit, 
But from where I'm sitting, these seats are so comfortable. They also have massages. They're obviously heated and cooled. Love these seats. And we have up, down, forward, and back lumbar. And the next thing is my hands are on the steering wheel and the leather quality on this steering wheel is, wow, this is next level. This is so soft. Yeah, and then the material here, the little accent, when you hit the light perfect, it's almost chameleon-like. Oh, that's cool. But this steering wheel, I started it up in the winter. I hit this little button here for heated seats and heated steering wheel. I swear the heated steering wheel did not get hot enough, quick enough at all. Okay. Very disappointed. But it is really nice to have that hard button and then- But the button takes you to a screen. It doesn't turn anything on. But it's cool because you don't have to like dig through the menus and stuff. Anyways, we also have a hard button for this. Yeah, I don't know if our mics will pick that up, but we do have a rear sunshade and it does squeak when you do it, so. And then we also have sunshades in the back on the sides. I can operate those right now. And what's really cool is when you put the car in reverse, it'll drop that back shade down so you can see out there. But we also have reverse camera and 360 cameras, which are awful, definitely not luxury car quality at all. Yeah, the resolution is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I don't really expect them to update it yet, but they definitely should for the price tag of this vehicle. Yeah, so let's get into the back seat now. Okay, we have TVs back there. Yes, and that's pretty much all they are. <laughs> all you can see is your radio or your Blu-ray player. So if you're enjoying Fast and Furious back there because you're an executive, too fast, like we are. Too fast, too furious. Yes. Not fast one, fast furious. This well, is the fast one. I'm not going to get into that debate with you. But then you can also control the radio stations and everything from back there too. So you have like full control and you got a little screen in the armrest to help adjust the position of everything back there too. Yeah, it's like full recline, it's super comfortable. You get massages, heated, cool. There's spot heating, them off. so good back there. And then you can also tilt the monitor from the controls back there, which is good. Cause I think we were in another luxury car or a car with screens in the back. We had to like look down this year. It might've been one of the GMs. I feel like it might've been the Audi a8 or something like that. We'll try to find out which one it was, but you know, you can tilt here, so that's nice and convenient. And then it's also like a privacy screen on there. So if you move to the side, you can't see what the other person's watching. Yeah, but I don't think you can watch one movie on the left and one on the right, because there's only one Blu-ray player. And it has an HDMI in the armor too. It's good that it has that stuff. And I was thinking about it, like, would you really want a USB to plug in with videos? Because like, nobody really pirates movies and puts <laughs> them on like USBs <laughs> anymore. That was, no. That was exactly. very, 2009. Yes. <laughs> do they have like uh, USB-C or lightning to HDMI? Yeah, like you Chromecast, could do, like... don't you? Or is that still HDMI? Yeah, Chromecast is HDMI. So you could actually just theoretically put a Chromecast in there if there's enough power for it. I don't really know. We'll try that one day. Anyways, I don't even have a Chromecast. Blu-rays. Blu yeah. rich, rich people have Blu-rays, right? Yes. And then you also do have your own separate sunroof back there as well. Yeah, which is a baller feature. And little mirrors that pop down because, you know, they all have that. And then moving back up here, what's a cool feature? is between the seat and the center area, there's a little cushion to help stop french fries from getting stuck down there. French fries for your driver? Yeah, when your driver orders french fries. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Driver needs to eat too. Okay, you wanna see another cool gimmick? Yeah, obviously. Okay, check out this armrest. Okay, opens up. Oh, I know. Oh, it's like Mercedes yeah, style, I think. Double hinge, but no back, but yeah. I don't care. This is super cool. That is cool. I like this material down here too. I don't know what this is. Brushed gray? Yeah, it kind of looks, yeah, I don't know what to call that. And then another like really fancy, super awesome part is when you adjust the temperature, it scrolls through the digits so perfectly. There's so much like good stuff in this. Yeah, and just like everything, like you look at the stitching, you look at the door gaps, like usually between the door and the dash, there's a huge gap. Here, there's like nothing, it's seamless. It's, it's very perfect. Okay, do you think the visors extend? Because the IS350 did not. I would hope so. Three, two, one, yes! Great job. So they can do the sliding visors. Yeah, who knew? And then this isn't piano black, but it's close. Yeah, but it's close enough that I don't care. Are you plus, offended? Do you want to fight it? No, there's not that much of it. There's a bit of it. Plus this car is really expensive that you're probably going to get someone to clean it anyways. Do you like the shifter? No. No, <laughs> I actually free style it. shifter. Yeah. You get used to it, but yeah, it kind of does suck. I, I did put it in drive when I wanted to be in reverse once, so. <laughs> okay, so get at a nice high gear, low speed and floor it in a little bit slow to downshift, tons of torque though. That's pretty good. And it's in Sport S Plus. And when you let off, you feel like the car still keeps accelerating for a bit. Yes, and Sport S Plus also gives you a lot of pumped in sound. Okay, so now do it in Eco, floor it and see if it still pushes you forward when you let off. A lot less sound and I'm gonna let off. Yeah, a lot less. And it takes a lot longer to get into gear 
to go faster, but I think it's still fine. I would prefer, I've been driving it in Comfort and Eco the whole time. This is definitely a Comfort and Eco type car. Yeah. And this has a 10 speed auto and it is a little bit slow, but it is seamless shifts otherwise. So let's test out that pumped in audio through Sport S Plus and the other modes. Okay, so I'm gonna go normal downshift. This is normal, Sport S Plus in one second. Yeah, that's pretty noticeable. You, you hear that? Yeah, there's a big crossover of just pumped in audio. Yeah, I think it's like, I mean, it kind of sucks, but you don't really need to drive this in Sports Plus anyways, so no. it's fine. And it's a completely off in Eco and all the other modes, so whatever. Yeah, and it's cool that we have the same LC500 type shifters. Well, not shifters, but mode changers on either side. And before we get into the rest of this interior and the comfort, let's launch it, but with you launching it in the driver's seat. So the zero to 100 on this is officially 4.9 seconds. Let's see what we can do. Time, you... time me. Go. Six. That's pretty damn good. What was the official 4.9? Oh, you're like a second off. <laughs> okay, I was using paddles and I was shifting early so I didn't bog. And we're also on winter tires and stuff, so. Six seconds. Do you think this will have the LC500 Savage Geese upshifts? Uh, probably not, Yuri. <laughs> well, there's only one way to find out. It's gonna automatically upshift, I guarantee it. Oh, yeah. oh and, and we got traction all the way off and everything. Exactly. Totally understandable. Oh no, the paparazzi are coming to get me at Toronto Motorsports Park, so turn three to five. Let's get away. Wow, we are getting away in comfort, might I add. Holy. Okay, you're going into that way hot. I got through just fine. Yeah, yeah. I just got it there. <laughs> Lots of body roll. I don't care. It's yeah, nice. I mean, the whole point of this car is body roll, just comfort. Yeah, no, I, I don't mind. This is exactly as much handling as I thought. But yeah, like compared to a 7 Series, that'll actually probably let you slide and do donuts. Yes, this is not that. This is not that kind of company. No. And I'm not even going to dare to try to put it through cliche slide corner. Well, you will, just not sliding wise. I'm just gonna go with it nice and gently. Okay, so we do have air suspension and it is so remarkably comfortable. Yeah, it's like floating on a cloud. It's exactly what I want out of a luxury vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. What did that bump feel like? I mean, I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't that uncomfortable. No, definitely not. And if you wanted to rip your large executive sedan on the track, come to Toronto Motorsports Park, because that's where we currently are. It's only about an hour away from Toronto. Open lapping is really affordable. You could pretty much just come here and test anything out. And a lot of other YouTubers do a lot of stuff here too. Shout out Speed Academy. Maybe we should race this against their new LS build. Ooh. Yo, Dave, that's a, that's a call out right there. Dave, you need to steal these door cards. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I'll bring you some glass. Yeah. Crush it up and make it look just pretty. Crush it with a hammer and just glue it to something. DIY like door paddles by Yuri Jacob. <laughs> so driving this on the road, this suspension just soaks up all the bumps and it is dead quiet in here. Oh, it's, it's like silent in here. When you fold in these mirrors, when you're parked, you can't even hear them move outside. bro like it's like silent silencio yeah the only thing you can't hear is the peasant blockers in the back you can yeah. definitely hear that motor the squeak but i mean that could just be like a one-off thing i'm gonna put a little bit of lube on there and it's no but good. i mean like the actual motors in the side doors oh i meant the yeah i know yeah that one i know <laughs> so before i get into all the tech stuff i think we should probably talk about the looks because a lot of people don't ever see these. Yeah, so it looks like every other Lexus because of the front grille, but it is just stretched out to the max. Yeah, it's got a huge grille. It's just it's just big and has a huge presence. And I love that when you launch it and floor it, the front end like lifts right up. It looks like it's gonna just eat everything. Yeah, and that's that air suspension again. And you can actually lower it and raise it because it will automatically do that for you so that it's easier for you to get into the car. Nothing makes me feel more rich than the car doing stuff to make my life easier. Exactly. So the headlights are very cool. Same style as every other Lexus. Yes, the L check marks. From the side, we have nice body lines. They're elegant, but they don't really stand out. But what does stand out is this paint. Yeah, and normally both of us are not fans of silver paint. It's just kind of boring, but this silver paint just pops so hard. It pops so much that you have to turn down the camera so everything else is dark. And I love that. This in a nice silver yeah. is great. Yeah, it makes total sense but for th this. But then we also really like that silver on that BMW 7 Series we had too. Yes. I think we just like silver on executive cars. Um, it fits them. 
<laughs> but it is really good. And then what do you think of the wheels on this? Wheels are pretty good. Yeah, they got that little bit of hook at the end. I think it's almost turbine. I don't know. They, they look nice. I yeah, like them. Yeah, they're okay. And then what would be the Continental recommended tire if you wanted to drive in style? The Continental Extreme Contact DWS 06. And now moving on to the back, we actually have real exhaust. Yeah. Well, well 20, 2020 real. Yeah, exactly. It's like the BMW style. Yeah, and then the taillights look pretty good up close, but from a distance, they kind of like muddy up and blend together. Not nearly as good as the new IS350 taillights. Yeah, or even the LC500, because those are like that 3D kind of mirror thing. They could do something to make this a little more punchy, but it's elegant, so it's fine. Yeah, overall, this is a great looking luxury vehicle. And we got trunk space back there that's normal, but the seats will not fold down because it's executive back there. Yes, and the trunk goes automatically up and down. It's powered. And you can pull it down on your own without having to fight an electric motor, which is that also is really cool. Yeah, yeah. So overall, looks wise, this compared to a 7 Series. I think this looks different enough that it's kind of cooler, but the new 7 Series has the big grill, so I kind of also like that. I think this look just barely squeaks out looks on a 7 Series because it's more rare. Yes. I don't think this looks better than a G90. No. This looks better than that like long wheelbase Volvo we drove many years ago. Yes, and it looks better than the new gen S-Class, but not the older gen S-Class. I agree. Okay. Because <laughs> the new gen S-Class just looks like an A-Class. Like, uh, yeah, no, I, the Mercedeses are weird right now. Yes. But there are good ones in there. So now moving back to the inside to the tech, Back to this infotainment screen, we do have Apple CarPlay, we do have Android Auto, the Apple CarPlay is nice and widescreen, I love it. And we do have Sirius XM rewinding satellite radio. Yeah, which I love. But what I do not like about this infotainment setup is it's hard to get to Apple CarPlay, there is no one button click to get there. In a Mazda, you'd be able to, or Mazda, you'd be able to click the menu button twice and it would flip to that between your projection and the infotainment screen. This is more clicks. Yeah, it's more clicks, but I also don't mind it at all. And what about our cup holders? Yep, totally fits a cup. Yeah, I don't know about a small cup. I don't have a small right now. I feel like it might hit this lip. I'll try to film one. Yeah, potentially. And v visors. visors. We've already did, did it. Okay. <laughs> lane keep. This does have good lane keep. Yes. But it's not the best lane keep. I think it sways a little more. If lanes get wider or narrower, it acts up. Yeah, it's not as good as a Genesis G90 or like a Mercedes S-Class. Or a BMW. But a BMW also sways sometimes but if it's no, an But no, SUV. like the Alpina, yeah. like that thing was way better than this. Yeah. This, this would cut out more. Anyways, and then this does have a head-up display, but my eyes don't like the way Toyota, Lexus head-up displays work. They don't really vibe, so I just turn that off and run everything through my gauge cluster. But it is cool to have a hard button to turn it on and off, and it is a huge head-up display. And we got a hard button for the reverse camera, 360 camera, so even though I don't necessarily like it, it's very convenient to have it. And it's got a cool mode that's like the forward-looking mode that points you in the direction. It's kind of almost like a third-person view mode. Yeah, that's cool. And what about that gauge cluster? I like it, I like it a lot. And I like how it's tucked into this little area. I know it's kind of weird. Yeah, because it like minimizes the amount of glass. But I just, this is a totally different take and I really like it. And nothing's laggy in here. Like everything just functions really well. Yeah, I have no complaints besides the tech isn't as good, but for all the material and stuff I'm getting, I think I, I would rather have this. Yeah, and every time I glance over at you and like I just see that glass uh, over there, I'm like, holy crap, this, yeah. this is unreal. You could not have a child with a juice box in this car. <laughs> like, there's no way anyone can clean this. Dude, cleaning this would be a nightmare. This needs to be maintained. The second you spill juice on it, sell it, I think. Yeah, I think you just gotta like scotch bright this whole thing or something. <laughs> I don't know, But man. yeah, like favorite interior, I think, is that pretty much everything with the LS500? Yeah. We should probably get to the price. We should. This one's a lot of money. It starts at $104,750. Canadian. And with this executive package, $139,350. Okay. I think that is too much for the tech, but probably the right amount for the materials. Yeah, and the overall experience and the uniqueness and all this glass and stuff, it's it's definitely where it should be, and especially because the back seats. And it is kind of hipster because nobody really knows. You have to explain it, which is cool. I think a lot of people will be very impressed by it, more yeah. than a 7 Series, but you never know because like people who've never been in one just like may think ambient lighting in a 7 Series is cooler than a few little subtle lights in this. Yeah, and it's definitely more understated from the outside, but it really shows itself on the inside. So like, unless you know someone with one of these, you'll never know how cool it is. Yeah, or you catch some guy opening the back door at the grocery, I guess you don't go to the grocery store if you have this. Yeah. Like, when are you gonna see this? I don't know, okay, at, at then, the golf course parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you're a valet, you're gonna love looking at this. Yes. And then 
Compared to a G90, which is obviously a lot less expensive, that has way better tech, and I think better looks more presence than yeah, this. Yeah, I do agree with that. But like... This interior is next level. Yeah, you can't really compete with it. No. So let us know what you think of the LS500. Did you even know it exists? And are you as shocked as we are that somebody actually made a folded fabric door card? <laughs> and watch our LC500 review just because we love that thing so much. Definitely the second best door card. Yes. After my Civic. And maybe watch the IS. Oh yeah. Watch your Civic too. Watch <laughs> the door card. <laughs>